All right, guys, what's going on? Just unlocked Born in Flame, Born of Flame, which, if you all know me, I'm Spark of Flame. I mean, come on, this should have been the first deck I did. No, that's not why I'm Spark of Flame. Anybody who gets the reference knows why Flame is spelled wrong. If you're not, you should probably Google it and probably figure it out. And that you find out a whole bunch of stuff about me. So, you know. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Born of Flame. Obviously, it's a red burn deck. It's very aggressive. If you watch... When you watch me play the expansion decks, you'll see how aggressive it is. So let's go ahead and go through this. Blaze. X damage to target creature player. I'm not playing it. It doesn't do enough damage. <laughs> Earthquake, I'm not playing either because it targets you and it doesn't target flyers. And the flyers seem to be the lowest creatures and they're going to be the creatures that you have a problem with. So, it just, there's better cards. Uh, Flame Slash is good to deal with creatures that have big butts like Yeva and other things. It's good to buy with other bird spells because it's cheap. So I definitely keep in the Flame Slashes. The Lightning Bolt is an absolute must. You're playing red, why would you not play Lightning Bolt? The Red Sun Zenith is what I'm playing in place of the Blaze because of the text. If a creature dealt damage this way dies, exile it instead. Awesome. It's so good. It helps you out a lot against the reanimation decks. It's good as just an endgame burn. So the Red Sun Zenith stays in. Dragon Hatchling. You're a burn deck. Don't waste two mana on a zero one that you have to pump every turn. Uh, Pyre Chart. Now, I'm going a very aggressive burn deck. If you've watched the games, it's very, very, very focused on creatures that burn things. And this guy, again, is just a mana sink. He's not good. You want to be tapping out as much as possible for burn spells or keeping mana up for a burn spell during their turn. He doesn't let you do that. Not to mention he costs two mana. Um, Reign of Embers. I keep. I might keep this in the deck. I'm not sure this is a card that's situational. I might have to come back to. With all the new token generation, I think it's going to be a good card to run. It's good against a lot of the soldier token decks, unless they get out their uh, their uh, glories anthems or their anthems. The Ruby Medallion, I do not play, simply because so many of your spells are double red or the like. It's just, the one mana just doesn't seem like it's going to save you that much. It might be worth playing, I don't know, we might come back to it if I can find enough cards to take out. But we'll see. I Again, in a red deck, I don't like wasting a card that could be a burn spell. I mean, obviously, if we could take out two mana in the deck when it's done, it would be great, but we can't do that, unfortunately. Searing Blaze, absolutely a must play. It's an instant. There are very few instant spells in the deck. This and the next card, I think, are the two low-cost ones, aside from Lightning Bolt. Um, and it does three damage to a creature and to a player, so it's absolutely something that you want to have in a burn deck so that you're not just going one-for-one -one trades. You know, you've seen me beat Chandra's decks just because I'm like, I'm going to drop this, as long as you waste a burn spell to kill it, I'm okay. I'll drop another one. As long as you waste a burn spell to kill this one creature, I'm okay. You know, so, you know, this helps minimize the one-for-one -one cards. Which, I mean, as long as you keep one-for-one, -one, you're okay. But if your opponent gets ahead of one-for-one, -one, then you're bad. Or you're off. You know, you don't install what you want. Searing Spear, instant three mana, or three damage. It's definitely something you want to keep in. Again, because of... Because of the Azorius Guild and you know other cards like that, the Shades and things like that, you can just catch them off guard sometimes. You know, they're like, oh, I'm going to stack eight triggers, and you're like, no, nope, burn spell, kill it. Uh, Boots of Swiftness, I'm not playing that many creatures. Uh, Torch Fiend, I leave in simply because of Jace's deck, and the, or not Jace's deck, uh, Talran's deck and the infinite win combo. You know, you need to have something to target that. He's not bad against, you know, other equipments and things like that so I mean he's not a bad card he's still 2-1 for 2 mana and has the ability to destroy an artifact it's it's one of those things that 
He destroys the uh, rings as well. I mean, he's just he's decent, but he's not he's not ideal. But again, he's he's good enough. Uh, Chandra's Phoenix is an absolute must, uh, just because it returns, which is again another reason that I'm definitely playing more burn spells than I am creatures because the phoenixes are great. Uh, Spitfire is great. Um, it works with the uh, the, py the Pyromancers. It works with uh, Inferno Titan things like that. So I mean, it's just a really good card. Uh, again, I don't like the mana sinks. Uh, Flame Break. There's so many burn. If you can make it so that you have a two for one, you're probably going to win just based off of one two for one. If your opponent doesn't have any cantrips or anything that's going to give him additional cards, the two for one advantage that Flame Break will give you is huge. Again, it only targets things without flying and players, but it helps. Uh, Flames of the Blood Hand is a good way to deal a lot of damage to a player, but it only targets a player. The damage can't be prevented, which is cool, but there aren't that many things to prevent damage in the first place. And if a player would gain life this turn, the player gains none instead. It's cool, but you're probably losing to a life gain deck anyway. Unless you come off ridiculously fast. And Flames is probably not going to help you. So I don't play Flames. Um, I just don't like it in the deck. It just doesn't do what I want it to. Um, Flames of the Firebrand. Definitely good. Uh, again, it gives you the option to get a 2 for 1 or a 3 for 1. And really set you ahead of your opponent. Which is what you want to be able to do. That's why I don't like this card, is it's just a sink. You go, four damage. You don't gain life. Which would be great, I mean, if they're getting a lot of life, but... I mean... It'd be nice if I could target a creature. Pyromancer, keep in, kills 1-1s one all day. Um, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, deals two damage to that player. If the player gains life, that player gains no life instead. Now again, if you're... Obviously, if you're versing a Johnny's decks all day, this is good, but without that, you know, probably not. You're probably going to lose first because uh, you don't want to take damage unnecessarily. Uh, chain Reaction deals X damage to each creature, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Again, it's a huge board wipe. It's great to get ahead of your opponent and just keep the game going. Chandra's Outrage absolutely must play. Uh, Firewing Phoenix. Uh, probably not, because it doesn't have haste. I mean, it's nice and big and scary, but again, it just... Four mana to return it from your graveyard to your hand, four mana to play it. I mean, it can block, it can block all day long, but again, it's just, eh. Furnace of Wrath, a creature would be dealt damage. If, if a source would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals double damage to that player instead. Yeah, you don't want that, because, again, you're probably wide open for attack. So if you let your opponents swing with two two twos and do eight damage to you, you're probably not a happy person. And you don't want to waste burn spells on little creatures. Uh, Furnace Warp again, it's mana sink. I don't like it. Uh, seeing Fireheart's good. So we're about to the five mana cost. So Beacon definitely stays in here. I like the Obsidian Fireheart because it's if the game goes on long, it's good. And it's a mana sink at that point in the game. You know, if your opponent doesn't do anything during their turn, you can go, I'll spend three mana and put a blaze counter on. Three mana, put a blaze counter on. So I like that kind of a mana sink. Because that means you can keep your mana untapped during their entire turn. So let's go ahead and bring in all the rest of these cards. And start over here, Cone of Flame. I don't like Cone of Flame. It costs five mana to do one damage, two damage, and three damage. And they all have to be different targets. So if you are only one creature on the field, you have to target yourself, your opponent, and that creature. Which, I mean, obviously you're going to hit yourself for one, but I don't like doing that. I mean, it's good if there are three creatures on the field and you can go one, two, three, kill them all, but I'm not a fan. Now, we did talk about Chandra's Fury. Again, it's another board wipe card that does damage to your opponent and can get you a two for one or more. I don't know if I'm going to play all three of these, but I'm 
going to try and keep at least one or two in. Uh, this guy's just a big creature. I don't like him. Uh, if a red instant or sorcery spell you control would deal damage, it deals double that damage instead. Why not? It's not a bad thing. Magma Phoenix dies. It deals three damage to each creature and each player. I love Magma Phoenix. So good. It's board wipe, and it can kill these really big annoying flyers. Sacrifice two mountains rather than pay its mana cost. Does four damage to target creature or player. This is probably something you want to keep in. Fire Blast is really good. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's Fire Blast. <laughs> it's, it's good to just, you know, accept the loss of, lo or the loss of lands late game, or even early game. I mean, your highest mana cost is five. That's where we're going to stop this at. Um, and, yeah, it should be okay. Number six. Highest mana cost is six. It might be, it might not stay in, because I think there's a lot of other better bird spells out there. But it's one of those ones that, you know, you go, I'm in a pinch, you're, I'm tapped out, and I can still do four damage. So it might be nice. Hostility. You should probably play Hostility. Uh, six mana for a 6-6 six, six with haste. And if a, cre if a spell you control would deal damage to an opponent, prevent that damage and put a 3-1 for each damage prevented, with haste, prevented, for each damage prevented. You know, it's good, it's fun, it's a great way to kill someone, and it's a great way to stay in shape. Uh, Inferno Titan speaks for himself, obviously he's great to kill creatures with, and he's a good, you know, final draw. Uh, Bloodthirst is cool, but again, it's just it's a lot of mana for a 3-3 that has the potential to be a 6-6, six, six, but still, 6 mana for a 6-6 six, six flyer, I'd rather just pay 6 mana for our other good things. Disaster Radius. Reveal a creature card from your hand. Deals X damage. Each creature your opponent controls. This is nice because it only targets your opponents, but it's 7 mana. Dragon Mage deals common damage to player. Each player discards his or her hand. Draw 7 cards. No. Don't let your opponent draw cards. It's bad. I mean, it's nice for you to draw cards, but don't let your opponent draw cards. Uh, flame wave deals four damage to target creature or player and to target creature and each creature he or she controls. Yeah, it's awesome, but again, its mana cost is way too high. And world fire, I plan on playing world fire in extended or like modern, I guess, because you can ramp up to it and go greater gargadon and world fire <laughs> and sack everything to greater gargadon except for one counter, pass your turn and attack your opponent with a greater Argonon and win the game. It's a lot of fun. So, let's see. We need to get rid of about seven cards. Now, I feel like we have a lot of good burn spells and we have a lot of ways to deal with a lot of creatures. So I don't think we need those. So that gets us down to needing about three more cards. Five more cards, five more cards, wow. Uh, the Kerr is looking real nice. Um, we might want to drop off some of the six cost. Now, obviously this isn't a six cost necessarily, but I don't think we need two hostilities. They both, they get shuffled in, so one should be more than enough. It's just an end game card, and the Inferno Titans are the other ones. So that works. Gets us a smaller mana curve. We're down to 26 lands, which is awesome. Because you don't really want more than 24. So if we get down to 24, that's ideal. Um, Rain of Embers, again, we have a lot of ways to deal with a lot of creatures. I don't know if I need Rain of Embers in here. Because we have the Flame Breaks. We have the fl Flames of the Firebrand. I mean, if Rain of Embers hits more than three creatures, we're going to be ecstatic. I guess it'd be two creatures, technically, but you don't take the one damage, so I guess we'll kind of just negate that. Um, I don't know if I need two Obsidian Fire Hearts in here. I like the one for the mana sink, but if I draw a second one, I'd be really upset because obviously I can't do anything with it. So, and I have no way to get rid of it, shuffle back into my library or anything like that, so I guess we'll just play with one. Just to have him in there, you know, just as a separate win condition, something that if we, if we draw late game, he'll be good. Um, fire Servants are obviously good. Beacon of Destruction, 
want to play, clearly. Um, the other two cards I'm thinking are the Torch Fiends, but I really don't want to get rid of the Torch Fiends, because like I said, um, they're good against some things. But I'm not a situational player. I feel like we should win before Talbrand starts to operate their infinite combo unless they start in their opening hand. So, yeah. That's the deck. Let me go over it real quick. Two Flame Slash, one Lightning Bolt, two Red Sun Zenith, three Searing Blaze, four Searing Spears, two Chandra's, three Chandra's Phoenix, one Chandra Spitfire, two Flame Breaks, uh, two Flames of the Firebrand, Prodigal Pyromancer, Chain Reaction, uh, four Chandra's Outrage, one Obsidian Fireheart, one Beacon of Destruction, two Fire Servants, uh, two Magna Phoenix, one Fire Blast, one Hostility, and two Inferno Titans. That's the 60 cards, and again, I obviously took out a lot of the creatures that have the uh, plus one, plus zero ability on them, just because I don't like them. Their mana sinks, they get bounced, they die, you waste a lot of mana. It's a very aggressive burn deck. You know, everything is a burn spell, kill a creature, do damage, and win the game. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know this is a deck that I enjoy playing. I mean, it's just burn though, so I mean, it's not like it's new or innovative whatsoever. But enough of spinning that. If you guys enjoyed the video, or if you think I did something wrong, or anything, you think it's a good deck, you know, let me know down below. Uh, if there's something I should be playing that I'm not, you know, let me know. I like to hear it. I definitely like reading the comments and try and read them all. Uh, there's really no reason for me not to be able to read them all. So, you know, I do like to see them. And if you guys could leave a like or a comment, obviously, since I just mentioned comments, that'd be great. And I'll see you later. Peace.